Hi, this is uh, Arnav Gupta from uh, Coding Blocks, and in uh, today's video, we are going to see ES6 promises. Uh, so, promises have been uh, introduced in the ECMAScript 6 standard of JavaScript, which means if you're using any one of the latest versions of Firefox, Chrome, Safari, or Edge, you will have ES6 promises available by default, and uh, you also have ES6 promises in Node.js 7.0 and above. If you're using anything older than these, you could use a library called Bluebird, which uh, gives you pretty much similar syntax. Okay, so uh, let us start with an example of a a fake downloading function. Let's say I have this uh, fake download function, and what this function does is it basically just sets a timeout and uh, this time out for one second. So let me consider that downloading a file takes a second. And I use a done callback here. And after a second, what we will do is we will call done with some data. So for example, let us uh, let uh, downloaded data equal some data we waved off the webs and call done with downloaded data. Okay, so uh, usually uh, these kind of functions, um, you can call these kind of functions using this kind of a syntax. You fake download, and then you define a callback function here. The callback function gets this data. We write something like uh, this. We downloaded a file which had this data. And uh, thing like this, uh, data, data out. Uh, and if we run this code, it's done looking like this. We uh, downloaded a file which had this data, some data available in the webs. Okay. Um, just to quickly go through the kind of code that ran when we uh, executed this function, uh, we call uh, fake download first. Okay, and this means fake download gets called. A uh, timeout is set. A second later, the done function is called. Our done function is this function that we have defined here. Okay, this is our done function. Okay, and uh, done is called. Downloaded data is logged in our console. Okay. Okay. Now going back to a uh, kind of interface that promises uh, make available to us is. Um, we uh, take all that away and uh, let's now create this function. Uh, fake download promise is a function. Um, basically, this. What this does is it returns a promise. Okay. And a promise takes uh, a function as an argument. It's uh, this function should uh, implement the executor interface. How does the executor interface looks like? So the executor looks like this. It's a function that has a resolve variable and a reject variable. Okay. And we do our magic here. We call set timeout. We have this function and we give it a one second timeout and we um, let Downloaded data equal to data from net. What we do is uh, we call this resolve function, right, with this downloaded data. How is this handle basically? We call fake downloaded promise, and then we usually send a call back here. We write a call back here like this in the older case. What we do here is we get an object, we get a promise object when we call this function. On that promise object, we uh, run the then function. And then takes the resolve function as its argument. So here we get the data because this data was passed here into our resolve function. And we write our log line here. The data that we downloaded is something like this. Right. Run this, and there you go. 
Uh, so here what happens is that uh, when we uh, run, uh, when you use a promise, uh, this uh, fake downloaded promise function, what it does is it returns a promise object. So when we call fake downloaded promise, this is a promise object on which we can use a then uh, call to write our resolve function. Okay. And now we did get a reject function as well. So let's take a look at how the reject function works. Let's, uh, what we'll do is we will uh, consider a boolean here. Correct. And uh, let's write something like this. If correct, in that case, we resolve. And if it is uh, not correct, in that case, we reject with a new error. This error says, uh, could not download file. Okay. We write it like this. In that case, uh, in our fake download promise, we call then, uh, we set true. And then we have a catch function, which catches errors. Take this error and let's say we just throw this error from here or let's just say we um, block the error right um, now if we run this uh, code it's gonna run exactly the way the older code ran because I have set uh, the value of correct as true if I set it as false and run this code again you get you get uh, this error uh, could not download the file and if you click on uh, the error line here see that we can see exactly where this error generated from we get the entire stack trace uh, how does this uh, work out uh, let's just uh, take a look at our code once again we can uh, in our uh, executor uh, interface we have resolve and we have reject so uh, when we call resolve uh, the function inside the then uh, function gets called and when we call uh, reject that case uh, the catch function gets called okay that's uh, basically how the promises are designed to work like one important thing that promises make available to us is that we can uh, we can use a deferred resolve, which means that uh, now this this function out here this downloads a, a file in one second. Now, what if I don't want to deal with the downloaded data one second later? What if I want to deal with the downloaded data ten seconds later? Um, we have a solution for that as well. Now the errors, uh, the catch function that you have to always resolve it uh, because you can anytime get an error from your promise, but the then function, you can write that later on. Um, let's, let's understand how, um, what I mean to say uh, works is we build something like this. We do let. Right, uh, let downloaded is equal to um, fake download promise. Um, let's just say um, false here. Okay, and um, we can have downloaded dot uh, catch function error. Let's say if I did it with true, I run this code uh, right now like this. You see this program runs perfectly. Uh, this is something that's different from the earlier uh, implementation using callback functions because if you do not uh, provide the done callback function, uh, the internal method would try to run the done function. It won't find the done function. Here we have not uh, dealt with the result here. We want to deal with the data result um, maybe three seconds later. We can do something like this, uh, set timeout um, a function. 
and uh, we're going to run this function uh, three seconds later. So here, let's write uh, downloaded dot then and function data. So we can uh, use something like this here. Data that was downloaded is this. Data. Um, we can see the difference better if I write an extra log line here. Downloading has completed. So um, let's just, uh, before we run this function, uh, you can see it uh, in this situation right now. See, uh, downloading is uh, completed. Uh, this gets printed. But uh, we do not do deal with the data because we have not used the then function yet. But uh, if we now uh, do make use of that, if we uh, uncomment uh, this part here, and uh, gonna run this file again, the download has completed, and uh, we deal with uh, the data, the, the data that's returned from there later on, uh, three seconds later. Uh, because uh, that's when we resolve the then function. So uh, the data that was downloaded is held for us by the promise. And uh, when we write uh, downloaded dot then, that is when we deal with the data. So even if the data has been downloaded, we can defer the work, defer the task of dealing with that data to some later point of time in the future. We don't need to write then uh, here. We don't need to write, you know, uh, you don't need to write uh, dot then here it's not required you can omit that part uh, not an issue okay you can deal with it later so that's what promises uh, make uh, available to you